Hey, 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 guys. It is Old Man G here, back again um, with another video. And we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Top 10 United Players Weekly. Top 10 United Players Weekly. Um, basically, it was a show that, that I was doing. Um, it, must have been, it must have been two months back or so, where we basically go through um, what I think, what I feel are the, the, the best performing players, the top 10 players for Manchester United during the week. It's hopefully going to be a weekly show. This is actually pre-recorded. Um, set will probably be set to go live every Sunday evening at half past eight, around or eight o'clock ish, depending on whether Manchester United play or not. But remember, guys, if you're new to the channel, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, United X, and smash that notification button. Play it to Manchester United News. Make sure that you get involved in the comments as well. And let me know whether you agree or disagree with uh, who I've gone as top 10. Um, so without further ado, Let's get to it. So at number 10, it's this guy, Donny van der Beek. Donny van der Beek. Um, I feel incredibly, incredibly um, <sighs> upset. Yeah, upset. I do. I, I genuinely feel upset for this guy because I don't know what Donny van der Beek has to do to get on the pitch in Manchester United. Um, and it just looks like, clearly, Donny van der Beek is the, our sixth-choice midfielder. It seems. Uh, maybe ahead of Matic, but if everyone's fit, then it looks like Bruno plays, it looks like Pogba plays, Fred plays, and McTominay plays, and then Van der Beek comes in. So he's basically our fifth choice midfielder. And if you're only playing two or three midfielders, he's, he's not going to come on, or maybe he might come on as a sub. He didn't even come on yesterday against um, Manchester City. Um Personally, when he played, especially when he played against, um, when he came on, I think, against, because this we're reviewing the of the, the games of the last week. So that's basically United against West Ham, United against um, RP Leipzig, and obviously United against City. And like I said, to be honest, it's very difficult given how bad, to be honest, we played in the first half of the West Ham game, um, as well as Leipzig, actually finding 10 Manchester United players that stood out. But from what I saw of Donny van der Beek when he came on the pitch, he proves why this guy just needs more game time to get involved. Um, and... I just feel sorry for the guy. Um, I'm starting to wonder why he was bought and he came to Manchester United in the first place because this is a guy who was linked with Real Madrid um, and now he's he's not even he's, he's being picked ahead of Scott McTominay. I generally think that he could play the Scott McTominay role probably even better. Um, no disrespect to you know McSauce, but he can, you know, he can, um, but he's not. Um, We've been told several times, oh, there's plenty of games, there's plenty of games. Well, you know, get him involved is all I'm saying. But for me, Donny van der Beek, for what he's contributed this week, is, is, is my top 10. But again, not really saying that much. Um, in at number nine, Harry Maguire. Um, I'm sure a lot of people might disagree. I have my own thoughts about Harry Maguire obviously being captain of Manchester United um, and how he leads that back line and how we're defending from set pieces, especially against um, West Ham um, and even against um, RB Leipzig. He did have, I think, a solid game against Manchester uh, Manchester City, which is partly the main reason why he's on this list, to be perfectly honest. Um, he does... He, he's better than Victor Lindelof. He's been better than Victor Lindelof, I would say, just in this week, just because of, obviously, his... He does win the ball in the air. He does... He, 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 most of the time, clears the ball of his head relatively well. Um, he did seem to have good ball, um, good ball control. Well, I say good ball control, comfortable on the ball against West Ham um, and against City. Um, I think against City in particular, he he made a few, one or two crucial blocks, which I think were important. Again, like I said, this isn't really saying much considering how United have generally played over the last week or so. But he comes into nine for me. Number eight. A guy who I obviously have uh, an agenda against, Scott McTominay. Um, but to be fair to Scott McTominay, in the second half of games, so in the second half against, I think, Leipzig, the second half against West Ham, and the second half against a City, he actually played okay. He played okay. And I don't get, and I don't really get this of Scott McTominay because, you know, he's very much a sideways passer. But then the second half, he'll pass forward. He'll try and make things happen. I just wish he could do that from the beginning. Um I still don't, you know, I still don't think that he is a natural CDM. I think if you're going to play two holding midfielders, then okay, fine, you play Scott. 
but I don't think he's disciplined enough or competent enough to play a lone CDM position. And that's why we have to constantly play a Fred or even Pogba back in that position. Um, it's 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 quite frustrating. Um, but for his three second half performances, he did an okay job, you know. So Scott McTominay is mine is my number eight. Next, Mason Greenwood. Now, did Mason Greenwood have a really, really, really um, good game against Leipzig and against um, uh, and against City? No, um, I, I did like that brilliant touch and that goal that he scored against West Ham, which is one of the main reasons why he's number seven. But also because Mason Greenwood has had quite a difficult time, to be honest. Um, a lot of um, criticism, a lot of high expectation. And for good reason, because he is tan, he is very, very skillful. Um, I do think that him and Rashford's decision making needs to be much, much better. Um, I have a bit more patient patience for Mason because he is just turned, I think, nineteen now, eighteen, nineteen. Um, whereas Rashford is twenty two, um, and he needs so he needs to start to learn that quickly. You know, Mason has got three more years before he becomes um, twenty two. You know, so he's still got a bit of time. But I think that if Mason's decision making got better. Um, then he could be brilliant. He could he could potentially be our number nine for the future, but his decision making has to improve. Okay, I know like, young selfs etc. But there are many times in the Leipzig game, the West Ham game, um, even the um, uh, City game, where you're like, bro, have a look, Rashford in space, pass it to him, don't take a shot. You know that that needs to be addressed. Um, and hopefully learning from Cavani, who who we, I think we desperately miss because of someone who gets into the positions is an action outright number nine, you know, um, who can get into the positions to actually finish. Hopefully Mason Green we can take some keys from that. So yeah, Mason Green was number seven for me. Number six is our Bruno Fernandes. Now, I don't think Bruno Fernandes over these last three games. Well, okay, West Ham I think was his, probably his best game. I think he was marked out of the game against Leipzig and against City. He didn't really do that that much. Um, but this is the thing with Bruno Fernandes is that, like, there's so... Because he's been so impactful. Let's be real. We are a much better team with Bruno Fernandes in the side. But because he's been so impactful in this team now um, that we we place him to such high expectations that we don't really see the, the consistency that, he's, that, he's, that he brings or continues to bring. Um, it was obviously his assist for Pogba's absolute belter of a goal. He, like I said, was marked out of the game against Leipzig. He wasn't that influential, and against and against uh, against Manchester City. To be fair, him and Pogba did create a few chances. I'm not saying this was Bruno's best week, um, but there's not a lot to pick from. And I still think that Bruno's consistency helps the team. This is our guy. This is the guy that should be our captain, and I think can lead from the midfield. Um, but we're going to just leave that to Oli. So. Um, number six, Bruno Fernandes. Let's move on. Now, here's, here's an interesting one. Luke Shaw. Now, Luke Shaw, Luke Shaw, just based on that City performance alone, I was like, right, okay, I can see why you probably would start Shaw over Tellers. Um, because, now, this could be because of what Tellers is being told, but I think that Luke Shaw definitely defensively is better than, from what I've seen, is, is better than not that Tellers is bad defensively, but Luke Shaw is better defensively. We definitely got that. But also Luke Shaw is not bad is is is, is going forward. The only thing I think Tellers has over Shaw is that I think that Tellers um but yeah no but I said that I said initially oh Tellers um his ability to you know whip the ball into the box set piece etc but in the city game to be honest Luke Shaw delivered quite a few good um uh, corner corner kicks right into and we had I think Two opportunities. I think Harry Maguire headed the ball over the net, etc. Uh, twice. Lindelof did, I think, one opportunity. So his even set piece deliveries even gotten better. So to be honest, um, Luke Shaw, it's again the competition thing, isn't it? I feel like with Luke Shaw is that when Brandon Williams and Tellers came to compete for the to compete, Luke Shaw got better. When Henderson came into the team to compete, um, he got better. Um, the hair got better. So Palmer does think this is the importance of competition. And one of my issues with Wambasak, who's actually not on the list right now, is that there is no competition at right back at all. At all. So I'm actually I'm actually happy that we've been linked with Kieran Trippier um, because we just don't have any competition on the right back. Dallos is not there. Fossimenser is not really 
Um, there, you know, so he, Wambasaka needs competition. I think the competition has helped Luke Shaw. And I say he should, he should start, uh, unless we're playing like a 3 5 to a back. Number four is Marcus Rashford. Marcus Jeremiah Rashford. Um, much like Mason Greenwood, um, uh, his decision making also has to be much, much better. Um, he scored a pr pretty good goal, obviously. It was a brilliant pass by Mata, who's unfortunately not on this list um, against West Ham. Um, like Greenwood, him were quite in ineffectual against Leipzig and against um, Manchester City. Marcus Rashford's an interesting one, you know, so because, you know, the thing with Rashford is that, like, you play Rashford because he can have, he can play not particularly great for most of the game, then come up with something really brilliant. And that's the thing of Rashford. And um, I wouldn't say that the last three games have been peak Rashford. I mean, we obviously saw what he did against Leipzig, the hat trick, and then obviously the goal against PSG. And we're like, geez, man, this guy is, this, this last week or so, it's not, it's almost been the reverse of that. Lost to Leipzig, didn't really do that much. Um, although we beat West Ham, which was solid, we we drew against City. So, you know, win, loss, draw. You know, it's a very, very mixed week for Marcus Rashford, I think. Um, but the main thing I keep on stressing with him um, is that his decision-making needs to be better. It really, really, really needs to be better. If it is, he'll be world-class. Well, should I say world-class? He'll be a very... He'll be near world class if his decision making was much better. That's my two cents anyway. Let me know what you guys think. Remember, guys, if you like the vid, 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 like and share the vid. It is greatly appreciated. And let me know if, whether you agree with these uh, with these um uh with these rankings so far. Or we think I've missed someone out who should be on. Let's move on. Number three, David De Gea. Um <laughs> There's an argument that the third Leipzig goal, you could say maybe was David De Gea. There's a small argument. I would still blame the defenders in that case. But to be honest, to be honest, um, most of the goals that he conceded, I don't think he... The, no, De Gea didn't play against West Ham, did he? I think he played... I think that was Henderson that played. Yeah, Henderson played against the West Ham. So it was just uh, RB Leipzig and... Um, Manchester City. People were like, why is this guy third? Haven't other people sort of... Because, to be honest, like, as an all-round keeper, he's been okay. He's been solid. And certainly against Manchester City, like, he was solid. Um, I think, again, with the competition with Henderson, De Gea has actually improved his game. The big question mark I've always had over De Gea um, has been his distribution. And... Henderson in that West Ham game showed, in my opinion, that his distribution is better than David De Gea's. As much as I love David De Gea being on this on this list, it it would be interesting to give uh, Henderson or Dean Henderson a run. It would be interesting to give Dean Henderson a run because I love David De Gea. I love what he's done for the club, and he's obviously high on this list. But I generally do think that we need we need a keeper who, and maybe he can practice this, I don't know, but we need a keeper that can distribute better, okay? Because I think, although we blame the defenders a lot, and I think that's that's a fair point, if we're constantly having to play from the back all the time, or we're constantly, or Dare's constantly kicking it into no man's land, the opposition wins the ball, our build-up is, is just basically just pointless, you know? Whereas if you look, for example, when Henderson, I know it, it went in, but went out, but still, he essentially assisted to uh, was it Bruno? I think then Bruno to Pogba, and then they got a goal, and that all came from just really good distribution. Um, I just think that that needs to improve from De Gea. Um, I, I can already see that Henderson has it a bit better in that respect, um, but he's still a sort of keeper, and he's and he's fair for me. Now, number two, number two, number two. Before we get to number one, uh, the surprise. Not more was a surprise number one, but who I think this is number one. Um, number two, Fred, 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 Fred the Red, Fred the Red, Fred the Red, and I will say this over and over again, Fred the Red for me is Manchester United's most consistent and I would argue important player. Yes, I know Bruno gets the goals and assists, um, but Fred provides that dynamism that, that like we missed Fred against Leipzig. I, I, I was so gutted when Fred got sent off against PSG. He got wound up, he went for it, um, and they knew that they were targeting him, and 
I think it cost us. Um, I genuinely think it cost us. I genuinely believe that if Fred had played against Leipzig, we wouldn't have lost the game. Um, we, and we probably would have played maybe like it probably been when Fred and McTominay in midfield with uh, we probably would have done a 4 2 3 1. I would have fought maybe not a back five. I don't know, you can never tell. But the point I'm trying to make is that Fred's importance as Manchester United cannot be underestimated. Um, and I don't think he gets as much respect or credit um, as he should have, to be honest. Um, yes, I know it's a given for Manchester United players to work hard, but like I see a lot, lot, lot of things, it's like it's when the play isn't there that you realise how much you miss the player. And and for every single game we've lost, like if you look at the games we've lost in Champions League where Fred didn't play, we lost um, when he wasn't on the field. He wasn't on the field, obviously, the second against um, uh, PSG. He didn't play against Istanbul and he didn't play against Leipzig. Two key games, especially the Istanbul game, though. Kiefer's going through. Fred wasn't playing. Okay, when Fred doesn't play, we struggle. Okay, and even against West Ham um, last week where Fred uh, didn't play at all. Like, yes, okay, we won. But we were, that was the worst first half that we'd played. Com- at, at, oh, it was bad. It was terrible. And I think part of that is because this guy wasn't playing. So big up Fred, big up Pastor Fred, um, and fingers crossed um, he can uh, he can he can he can move on to new heights because I think for me he's Manchester United's most important player um, ahead of I would even argue Bruno if I'm perfectly honest. However, the top spot does not go to Fred this week. The top spot goes to one poor Pogba. Um, now I think a lot of people are going to be surprised that geez, old man G, old man G, poor Pogba. Paul Pogba first. How can Paul Pogba? How can given what you said and the and Paul Pogba's comments and he should be out of the club and what's going on and how can Pogba be in Pogba FC? Pogba in Pogba out, all in, all out, and all that, all that, all that banter. Um, listen, over over the three games that we played this week, Paul Pogba has been the most consistent and arguably our best player. Okay. He got us back into he got us back into the game against West Ham with a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant strike, an absolute belter of a strike, and that got us back into the game. That gave us the confidence to come back into the game. Then against RB, when he came on because he didn't because he didn't start, he obviously contributed to getting that second goal, and he played okay. And again, it was arguably one of our best, if not our best player. Um, so there's a question mark. Why didn't he start? Well, he didn't start because of potential because of the comments. Didn't help. The whole mini Riola thing, we know that. Um, but that doesn't take the fact that on the pitch, Pogba gives his all. As he said in his Instagram post, Pogba gives his all. He gives his all. Simple as that. He gives his all. Um, and as to Manchester City, he created most of the chances, to be honest, if we're going to score any goals. So... Was this again his best week for Manchester United? I wouldn't say so, though that goal against West Ham was absolutely sick. Um, even against PSG when he played, um, when we were down to 10 men, he created things. So for all this stick that Paul Pogba gets, yes, we know that he doesn't want to be at the club anymore. Yes, the club know what's going on inside um, and they'll handle it. Maybe this is just, maybe this is just, we don't know. Maybe this is just, maybe this is just all negotiation Um talk where like he's just basically wanting to get like a really a good deal i don't know we, I, I don't know what's going on really well because the, the latest rumors i heard was that um juventus wants the loan deal and i, and I, and I don't think that's going to happen um because whether united fans whether pogba and pogba or not we need poor pogba we do need poor pogba at manchester united um so yeah for me poor pogba is number one our most consistent performer deservedly so um and hopefully if his inst- as according to his instagram post blur sorry um he's going to give 1000 percent for manchester united and that's what we're going to need as we continue to push on in the league hopefully gets get some silverware this season um and just take things from there so yeah guys that is me that is me that is me let me know what you think in the comments guys this is one of my old school videos where you don't see my face, but you hear my voice. For those who've been subscribers for a while, you know I used to post a lot of these videos where you didn't necessarily see my face. It was just all, all audio. 
But let me know what you think. Let me know if you like this. I'd really, really appreciate if you guys like the video, like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. And just appreciate some feedback as well, whether, you know, you like this idea of, like, a weekly series. I want to try and pre-record these so I have more time to do other stuff. Um, but also, I can get more content on the channel. If you have any other suggestions or ideas for me to, uh, to do, and if you want more of this, then just let me know in the comments. Have a nice day, everyone, and cheers.